feel no reason for thanksgiving to this day i can hardly bear to think of that quintessentially american holiday thanksgiving when i do however i do not dwell on pilgrims with wide black hats sitting to sup with red men their long hair adorned with eagle feathers i think not of turkeys nor of cranberry foods now traditional for the day of feast unlike millions i do not even think of the day's football games and not thinking of it i don't watch them i think of the people we have habitually called indians the indigenous people of the americas those millions who are no more i think of those precious few who remain and wonder what do they think of this day this national myth of sweet brotherhood that masks what can only be called genocide several years ago i read a thin text that was pregnant with poignancy it was a collection of native remarks from the first tribes who encountered whites in new england and down throughout several hundred years throughout it all the same vibration could be felt no matter the clan or tribe a profound sense of betrayal and wrong from people who were treated like brethren when they first arrived in new england the name powhatan circa 1547 to 1618 is still recalled even if that wasn't his name but what the english called him known as wahan sonakok by his people He headed a confederacy of 32 tribes and governed an area of hundreds of miles. He was the father of Pocahontas, the young Indian maiden who saved the life of Captain James Smith. A year after sparing Smith's life, the white captain threatened the great chief. This is some of his response given in 1609. Why should you take by force that from us which you can have by love? Why should you destroy us who have provided you with food? We can hide our provisions and fly into the woods and then you must consequently famish by wronging your friends. What is the cause of your jealousy? You see us unarmed and willing to supply your wants if you come in a friendly manner and not with swords and guns as to invade an enemy. I am not so simple as not to know it is better to eat good meat, lie well and sleep quietly with my women and children, to laugh and be merry with the English. and being their friend to have copper hatchets and whatever else i want than to fly from all to lie cold in the woods feed upon acorns roots and such trash and to be so hunted that i cannot rest eat or sleep in such circumstances my men must watch and if a twig should but break all would cry out here comes captain smith and so in this miserable manner to end my miserable life and captain smith This might be soon your fate too through your rashness and unadvisedness. I therefore exhort you to peaceable counsels and above all I insist that the guns and swords the cause of all our jealousy and uneasiness be removed and sent away. That's from the book Great Speeches by Native Americans published 2000 by Dover Press. That great chief sentiments could be echoed for over hundreds of years. but injustice would just be piled on injustice genocide would be the white answer to red life centuries later what can thanksgiving day mean to native peoples thank you for stealing our land thank you for wiping out our people thank you for placing a remnant of our once great numbers on rural ghettos called reservations thank you for abolishing most of the ancient traditions thank you for poisoning what little indian lands remain with uranium Thank you for poisoning the lands now inhabited by the whites. Thank you for letting Indians fight in American wars against other people. Thanks. The real tragedy is that millions of Americans don't know and don't want to know about Indian history and traditions. Today the names of rivers, lakes, and landmarks bear indigenous markers of another age. The people, except for an occasional movie, are mostly forgotten, out of sight, out of mind. the easier to replace with false images of happy meals and turkey dinners happy thanksgiving from death row this is mumia abu jamal